In May 2002, just one month after NSYNC ended their sold-out celebrity tour, The ever-confident Justin Timberlake made a risky move and left the security of NSYNC behind. No more NSYNC now because of this guy. To Blance's his own trail as a solo artist. I'm gonna celebrate, I think. From the first note recorded Ain't nobody love you like I love you. to the first week of album sales. MTV cameras were there to document his incredible and challenging ride. Can the pop prince hang with some of hip hop's hottest producers? 50 grand, I get it in two takes. What effect does the very public breakup have on the creative process? Anybody who's ever broken up with somebody that they love with all their heart, that's some tough stuff. As the audience's appetite for pop music changes, will Justin continue to have success, or will going solo prove to be a mistake? Be there through it all on MTV Album Lock. Everybody dance. Justin! You really only get one shot at your first uh, solo record, and I want to make it just 100% me. Um, whether people think it's good or it's bad or it's ugly, uh, I want people to know that this is who I am. The first person that I called when I decided to to do this was my mother, you know, to ask her what she thought. I was just glad that he had finally come to a decision because he had been toiling with it for a long time. He wanted to find a way to be able to do his solo thing but still keep in sync intact and that was really important to him. And so I set, you know, everybody down individually uh, and said, you know, this is something that I want to do. This is something that I have aspirations of right now. And I feel like I have to do it or I'll never forgive myself. The start of it, baby. This is the start. This is the beginning. The beginning of the end. I mean, I'm folks to go to Miami and stuff to record. I'm going to LA to do my album. I'm going to Virginia Beach. But there's nothing. Usually the record company says, this is what we think you should do. We're going to call these people so you can work with them. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I informed the record company that I wanted to do my own record. I want to do something that sounds like nothing else. Once I get a guidance track down, I'm sure we'll go back and get the first track again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't want to get two that are like, Can't nobody love you like I love you. You know, kind of like that. And then I want to get two that are like, Can't nobody love you like I love you. You know what I mean? It's got a little more tone to it. Yeah. Me and Justin met in a club called Spa in New York maybe like two years ago. And um, he just expressed that he wanted to work with us. He enjoyed our work and what it is that we do. He liked my beats. It's I just thought that was cool that he was, you know, open-minded enough to to like that. It's fun to work with somebody like Pharrell, who understands how spiritual it is to work with somebody who has the same vibe, who you can just vibe off of back and forth and back and forth. And We decided that we wanted to make this album a classic album that stood the test of time. And uh, the best way to do that is to just definitely listen to everything that comes to you instinctively. Writing to me is kind of a meditation. When I write, especially when I'm sitting at the piano by myself, or when I'm writing alone on, on my guitar, I kind of feel like there's somebody sitting next to me kind of telling me what to say. 
It's a very spiritual experience for me. Every song should should be left of the song you just wrote. Every song, you know? You don't want to write the same song again. Let's go! Hey, turn me down, because I'm going to sing a little, a little bit louder. Got laid off at your job today You've been working at this place for years Is that the rhythm though? Yeah. Let's just get, let's go, girl. Let's just get, let's go, girl. Let's go, girl. Yeah. Hey, let's just get, away. let's go, girl. A little earlier. Honestly, I've been ready for this, you know, for a while. And I'm glad that I got to do it. I'm glad that it worked out this way. Now, this isn't in sync. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a whole different thing. I'll do everything I can to kill it, you know, to really murder it. I, I, I want it to be the best it can possibly be, and I've always been like that. So, we'll just have to see what happens. Hopefully I won't trip and bust my ass. Coming. Anybody who wants to get down, you know, and people that I feel could best help me bring out the sound that I want to bring out. When people ask me to work with them, you know what they want. They want that big ballad. going from that premise, all I really need to do is to sit down and talk with you for a minute, just to see what you're into, what you've been going through, what, you know, what's on your mind. I can honestly say that the music on this album is the most personal writing experience I've ever had. You know, and, and a lot of times it was therapeutic. The past six months is a big percentage of, of the thoughts and ideas and the feelings that came out of me. A broken heart, for instance, the best thing to do with it is to deal with it head on is to face that demon. So that's how I chose to face it, was to write about it. I think coming off of loneliness only wants you back here with me. Common sense. But common sense no. knows okay. that you're not good enough. The breakup, and this is common knowledge to everybody, Anybody who's ever broken up with somebody that they, that they love with all their heart, that's some tough stuff. And uh, that was what it was, regardless of if I would have done this project or not. You know, but you do seek refuge somewhere, and I seeked it in creativity. I mean, it's cause, because <laughs> all, all you had, had to do. do was apologize. You just broke every heart in the in the whole wide world, dude. First of all, you should know that the album title is now Justified. Okay? The in-store date has been moved up from November 12th to November 5th. Reason being, um, with the radio window kind of closing a little bit, it made more sense to move the project up a week to capitalize on the audience. I'm gonna try to hook up with Timbaland. Drums. Hey, hey. Tim is a hip-hop genius. I couldn't fathom putting those beats together and those sounds together and hearing everything he hears. I said, so all right, here we are. What are we gonna do? He was like, man, I just want you to do what you do. I said, are you sure? I said, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm here. I want you to do what you do. I said, all right, cool. 50 grand, I get it in two tapes.
Don't ever put me to the test. I will deliver. His beatbox is crazy. It's different, right? That's tight. Is it all the, like the rhythm track? Is that beatbox? Like, oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. The last NSYNC album, he was like, man, I want to do something like far left, but you know, not go out of, outside of NSYNC. It's the bridge part. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm going to play it from the bridge so you can, can feel it. You know what I'm trying to say? But you ain't got to do nothing right there. Yeah, that's cool. You've been looking for me. You're shining star. Baby, here I am. So why you waiting? Why you waiting? Certain people bring stuff out of me, so I was like, cool, I try it. You know, I work with them. There's nothing worse you can do to somebody, man or woman, that take them away from what they love. This one is a kiss off record. Okay. That mean when that beat comes in. You just become mad. I'm not bitter. I'm I'm what was better. Alicia saying? I was kind of skeptical at first because I didn't know what kind of sound was going to come out of this situation. When I went in and started listening to Justin's records, my, my legs are just going like that. So it was like, yeah, we got a hit on our hands. Those emotions are strong. They hurt, you know. The fact that he could get up and go in a studio and work and do the work ethic that he has going through that is amazing to me because I know when it happened to me, I just wanted to sit in bed and sleep for two years. So why do you think Clyde would want that? Because it's got a, it's, it's definitely radio friendly. You know him, he wants his 50 to 100 million radio right off the jump. To him, that's gonna be a safe direction. <laughs> I wanna be safe. I'm pretty stubborn. So if I start to feel something, you know, I'll, I'll definitely speak up. And if I feel that I'm right, then it's up to the record company or the manager or whoever the debate is about. It's up to them to show me why I'm not right. I didn't battle with him about it because you can't battle with a creative person. He knows, because I can't tell Justin what's the best sound for Justin. He's the one that has to create that himself. I'd rather come out hard. I'd rather come out. Yeah, but no joke. Don't, don't want to come out hard for clubs when you are announcing a new project. You want to come out hard for radio. Yeah, I know. So, I know. That's the only thing. I was just like really happy about what I've heard so far. Because I didn't know. I had no clue coming into this. That first track was crazy though, right? Yeah. It's bananas. The first single is the first song I recorded. It's the first song we did me and Pharrell and Chad. And there was no doubt in my mind. When we finished our first song, I said, this has gotta be the first single. After months of recording, Justin leaves the security of the studio walls behind and starts the real work of promoting an album. That's what I don't think I was ready for. Find out if he has what it takes to launch his album. Britney, 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 Janet, Janet, Janet. It's strange being on your own. Because you second guess some things sometimes, you know, sometimes the, the nervousness turns into a little bit of insecurity and you start to go, am I doing the right thing by taking this picture? Am I doing the right thing by, you know, doing this certain song? But in the end, as long as it feels like you and you like it, you can't feel bad about it. We want to make sure that we get every cover, we get every magazine, we get every radio station. Um, that way, if for some reason it wasn't successful, we can't come back and say, well, we should have did this and we should have did that. This is what happens when you put a record together. You have to promote it. Actually, what we're doing is uh, we're shooting a photo shoot for a magazine. CD cover. 17 magazine. This, taking pictures. Bye but I guess it has to be done. 
So that's why we're here. Watch out, boy. Get back then. Watch how you act in. That's my Pharrell impression. Open, Justin. I can't, man. Yeah, you can. Don't say that. I'm gonna kick your ass, man. A lot of the photo shoots I've been doing lately, just more natural. And um, man, my eyes watering so bright out here. Um, just more natural and and um, unrehearsed, because that's the way I kind of feel like uh, the album is, really. Um, very unrehearsed and raw. So, why not make the image go with the music? That's smart. In case you were wondering what it looks like. Everything looks good. No matter what we came up with, concept-wise, I knew by working with Stephen Klein that I was going to get a one-of-a-kind picture. And that, to me, is what it's all about, because an album cover is remembered forever. I'm tired. It's all for the greater good of me. As if there wasn't enough to do with all the photo shoots and hoopla and interviews, we're releasing the first single to radio and clubs and the DJs and stuff next week. So, I'm very nervous. It's time for a huge debut tonight. Not many songs can debut at number one after they were played for the very first time just a few hours ago. Ladies and gentlemen, live on KISS FM, number one tonight, my homie Justin Timberlake and of course another track is called Black I Love You on KISS FM. Finally, when it went, he was, you know, very nervous, but in L.A. was the first place they actually played it, and they played it on the morning show on Rick D's, and that night, it was the number one most requested on the radio station in L.A., so that made him feel good. And then a bunch, about 22 stations, had the record the next day. It was, it was like, wow. It's first day of rehearsals, and we're going to go, like, two or three days. Just me and the choreographer. This is Marty. And Marty actually worked on Girlfriend. But you can cut to that right now. Which I know how you MTV cats are. You'll cut to like, boom, da da, my girlfriend. And you'll cut back. So, you know, he did that. You know. What you just saw. Yeah, what you just saw. Was that the same thing? Marty did Girlfriend, choreographed Girlfriend. And I just love his style. And his style goes with what I wrote so, so much. On top of that, He's just a badass choreographer. Justin is is amazing in the sense that he can he can see something and emulate it, if not the first time, at least by the second or third time. I just wrote whatever came through my heart, you know, and, and that's what this album is about. And that's what this performance is about, you know, it's about just doing it on my own. I think I have to prove this to myself, most of all, because I went this far with it. To me, it's it's a chance to show my own heat. So they went very well. I'm starting to get everything to flow in my system as far as the choreography goes, but now I think it's going to be about me figuring out everything in between. Um, because not only, like I said before, not only do we have a video to think about, we have the VMA performance to think about too. So. Like 14 years later. It's about it once, but hey. Hey. <laughs> I wanted this video to look simple and raw, just like the song. The black one? So this is what all the rehearsals have led up to. Going in for the first shot. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited. It's gonna be cool. I wasn't here yesterday, so this is the first time I'm seeing some of the stuff from yesterday. Very, very impressive. I love it, man. It's, it's got an edge to it, you know what I'm saying? I think that's very important. 
I don't want the video to look clean. I want some of the shots to almost feel like accident. I didn't want the video to feel like this big thing, like these big CGI effects, you know? There's time for all that. To me, I wanted it just to be simple, you know, and, and kind of let shoot in locations that I felt comfortable and let me kind of do my thing. So, how does it feel in, L in L.A. at this point, Jules? Did you get any retail requests? Yeah, absolutely. Um, those who have, heard, who have heard it are just, they're buzzing about it. Right? Yeah, it sounds great. Chicago, Linda. Chicago, it's funny because the DJs on B96 were begging people, please stop calling, we'll play it in the next hour. Is that right? That's great. It's madness. The video was shot last week in L.A. It was directed by Diane Martell. Um, Justin's going to kick it off tonight on the VMAs here in New York premiering the, uh, the new single live. Those people that have questions about how is Justin going to be without the other four guys, what's he going to do by himself on stage, how are the fans going to react to him, will all be answered. Yeah, I do have to perform at the VMAs, don't I? I was going to be stepping out to the world, man, saying here I am, and here is who I am, 100%. It's not like four other dudes standing up there with me. It's just me. There's a weird factor to it because when he looks to the left to the right, those four guys are not going to be there. The reason that I made this album was primarily for myself, but also because there's a whole piece of me that I feel like I want to show the world. Coming up. Like journey to solo stardom is ready for liftoff. And get this, more Justin news. Justin's first solo performance, where he'll sing Like I Love You for the first time, will be at none other than the 2002 MTV Video Music Awards. Now, Justin is not afraid to admit that he's got a few pre-concert butterflies. A, I'm up there by myself. Um, B, I'm up there by myself. And I don't know if you were filming yesterday when I was doing that interview with the UK people. Were you filming? Mm -hmm. Did you get me sneezing? Yep. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> that was the beginning. And as soon as I sneezed, I said, oh, something's about to go down. And this morning I woke up and all of a sudden I sound like Mickey Mouse. Hey, come to the park. <laughs> so I'm going to do the performance. But I can't make any promises right now. Of all days for me to get sick, I've come down with some kind of crazy cold. But I'm still here. I'm fighting it out. It's for the love of the game. Yeah. This is what I request. Candy. <laughs> but they got you the wrong gum. Got me the wrong gum? I know, I told them, I said he's not going on. I got you the game. I bet you did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I quit. Cello performance. Everyone's talking about it. Justin's performing his new that's stuff right. tonight. Justin, oh yeah, that's, that's right. right. He you debuted know? his first single today off his new yeah. project, right? I'm so looking forward to it. We're all got our fingers crossed yeah. for him. Are you nervous? I'm gonna be up there by myself, but at the same time, I'm really excited. All right, darling. Now come on through. Come on. Amazing things have a way of happening at the Video Music Awards. This is one of those moments. Performing solo for the first time anywhere in the world. Give it up for Justin Timberlake. As far as the performance goes, if you ask me, I could tell I could tell you five things that I did wrong. Um, but I guess that's the way that I'll always be. 
Hey, hey, hey! I don't like that attitude, mister. You just performed, you did pretty darn good. You get a bat on your back. If people are like, well, I just thought it sucked, they're not saying that NSYNC sucked. They're like, Justin sucks. I got a towel, anybody? I'm not scared of the critics. That's what they get paid to do is to have an opinion. I don't think the press following the VMAs was bad or good. I just think people misunderstood what I was trying to do. And Justin Timberlake channeled Michael Jackson, who also made a little appearance. I think a lot of people confuse what I wanted to do with something uh, one of my idols does. Justin, ever since the VMAs, you crossed that threshold. You hit another level, like Michael Jackson. How are you uh, dealing with all the Michael Jackson comparisons? Yeah, um, the VMAs, it was like, uh, I swear, there was like a silhouette of, uh, of Michael Jackson behind you. I mean, it, it looked so... This is not just for me. This is what everybody says this, and everybody knows this now. I kind of think it sounds like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. It's Michael Jackson. I'm Michael Jackson. -ish. Michael Jackson. Yeah, you Michael. I think as time goes by that people will see uh, who I am for what it's worth. All right. The gloves are not, don't have damn rhinestones on them, for God's sakes. <laughs> the gloves were like leather breakdancing gloves, like breaking. That's where the influence for the gloves came from. You know what's so funny? I think a lot of people said that because I wore that hat. I really didn't think so much about the hat, which was completely inspired by Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly and mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra. And Frank Sinatra and yeah. Michael Jackson. I think that was what right. kind of made people think of something yeah. like that. And the shirt kind of uh, unbuttoned with the t-shirt under, kind of, you know, in the wind. See, I never even thought about something like that. I think Michael's influenced this whole generation. Absolutely. I think you're totally inspired by Michael. You're the Michael Jackson. And I don't know oh, about come that. On. I don't Did know. Get, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big glove to fill. It's an amazing compliment that someone would even put him in the same category with Michael Jackson. And in other ways, you kind of like, all right, you know, he's his own person. We don't really want to hear that. I personally uh, don't want it. It's a lot of pressure to be compared to something that's a phenomenon. Okay, now a moment that has been in the making since the days of the Mickey Mouse Club. We've known him here at TRL for a long, long time. Uh, people saying that he could be the next king of pop. We'll have to wait and see. And I ain't gonna lie, I turned it on the day after it premiered to see what number is gonna be on TRL. Welcome back to TRL. Justin Timberlake debuts in the top position. Cause we're here tonight. Justin Timberlake, the 13th artist to debut at number one. That was wonderful. Wonderful moment. I'll never forget it. Silas. We're gonna play the music for the international press. This is their first time hearing the record, so you know, rather than them keep interviewing Justin and not knowing what they're hearing or talking about, we're gonna play the music for them. I wanted to come down here to say hello because this is a totally different project, and I wanted everybody to understand that. Where are y'all from? Paris, Germany, Germany. Austria. Been there, been there. To me, this is just a perfect opportunity to show you guys and the world exactly who I am as an artist. So I don't want you to expect something because you're going to get something else. And this is called Take Me Now. That's a Jenna. That's a Jenna. With Jenna? Yes. Uh-huh. It's cool. She said right now. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Just weeks until Justified hits doors, Justin must deal with having all eyes on him. What does Justin Timberlake's new material sound like? That's been the big question more recently. And high industry expectations. I'm sure we're going to have a very a great first week, a very sizable first week. Watch and see if his launch is considered a success. <laughs> I think just doing the interviews, doing the promotion for this record, that's what I don't think I was ready for. Got time, but I don't mind. Just wanna rock you, girl. I just want you guys to get a taste of what I go through. When I first heard, like I like you, I'm thinking... Or like yes. I love you. Yes. That it's... works too. So today is another interview day. So were you kissing Janet Jackson in a club? Well, we all know that you were dating Britney Spears. What was it, like four years? Or... Before, there were five of the guy, four of the guys to share the responsibilities of press and and radio station interviews and stuff and now it's all about justin justin and alicia keys was there any truth to that yeah my favorite it. thing in the world is that getting on y'all's nerves 
Because this is what it's like to have to answer questions, the same questions all day long. It's like listening to this. First of all, how's this whirlwind of promotion going right now? I know you're doing a lot of talking it's about awful. yourself. Yeah. It sucks. You, get no, sick, you ever get sick of talking about yourself? Um, yes. What's wrong? Do I have to do a phone interview? Let's do it. Give me the phone. Did your editor make you do this? Um, she's ridiculous right now. Are your ears ringing yet? I got up at 6 o'clock this morning. I can't honestly say I was happy about it. You know, I mean, there's a couple of things on there, a couple of things you said. I was like, huh, that's interesting. There's a little bitterness there. <laughs> this is what it's like, folks. 25 spins a week. If you can just tell me one thing, there's only a question I'll ask you about this sexy little snowflake. Did you f the f***ing <laughs> sir? Come on, Jess, yeah? <laughs> I don't want to talk about somebody else. So... Britney, 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 Janet, Janet, Janet. Now, there was a rumor about you and Janet Jackson. Will you Janet Jackson? Oh, Even if you're lying, I'm going to promote that you did. <laughs> That's what it's like. <sighs> Try doing that off. Okay. It's tough when you don't have buffers around. Like, when, when I could just say something random to act for a buffer for Joey or if there was some rumor about him that they were asking him about. Hey, Joey, you're dating China? And I could have made some crazy-ass remark on the radio, and they'd have been like, oh, okay, and they would have dropped it. I was actually just going to ask Mark if he would just let me pay for this window so I could break it. People feel like they can just say anything to you. At the first part of that whole conversation, he really thought he could just say whatever to me. Yeah, it gets on your last damn nerves that people just keep asking and prying and blah, 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 blah. Mr. J.P., when I have free time, I like to play golf. I like to play golf. After that, I'll play some golf. <laughs> I don't look like I play golf, but I do. As a matter of fact, can we show that clip? I'm coming for you. You gotta admit, that was pretty pimp. Okay, so uh, we had a spank in your conversation a few weeks back. We talked about some of this stuff. Um, I think it was right before the release, I think. Yeah. Maybe? So now that we're close to May and we're a couple months away or within a couple months, let's get into talking about some of this stuff. The biggest thing we want to have is on Tuesday, the 5th, it is Justin outside. That is the goal. We haven't had it in three years. It's been since 99. So um, that should be your priority. Probability is very high that he'll do very well with this album. It could be chart busting. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. If it's possible that he can be bigger, then this will be that thing that makes him bigger. You know, exponentially. It's gonna be huge! Colossal, monumental. Don't say that! <laughs> don't say that! I'm sure we're gonna have a very a great first week, a very sizable first week, one of the bigger first weeks of the year. You know, I'd be shocked if the album doesn't debut at number one. Is he going to sell a million copies the first week? I think not. Um, I'd take five or six hundred for sure. Justin Timberlake is here. We have him for the next hour, ladies and gentlemen. And our live studio audience is here. You can hear them yelling and screaming in the background there. We're going to talk about the new CD, Justified, coming out tomorrow. I'm nervous. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. I'm pretty nervous. When NSYNC put a record out, it was like, if everybody didn't like it, we were like, well, at least we have each other. Right, right, exactly. As far as, like, what it's going to do, I really don't have any expectations. From Justified, this is Justin Timberlake, it's Cry Me a River. Ooh, sounds good on the radio. You're three guys. We're coming on the wall. We're getting around to you. The album will be out in, what, 30 minutes? I get hyped up looking at all the promotion that's put into it. And 
that's the part that makes you start to feel nervous is everybody talking about it. Tammy, the first five people. I think the success of the record to me is measured by how much you put into it and I put so much into it. Can you turn back? You don't turn back. Is it worth it? I got it TRL worth. tomorrow, followed by a mini concert tomorrow night performance at the Teen People Party, I think. It feels a lot different. It's just 100% me. <laughs> I usually just couldn't sleep the whole night, which I'm sure I'll be up all night. You know what I'm really surprised at is the critical acclaim that it's got. You know, I mean, this is personal for me, and I really wanted to see what people thought about it. What's up? How you feel? Good. I'm ready. Let's go. We have Justin performing outside in Times Square. We're going to kick it off in grand style with a live performance off his new album, Justified, out today. Give it up for Justin Timberlake. So, go on and just... I'm not going to sit here and say I released this album to go number 12 on the charts. You know, that would be, I'd be full of crap. I want to be number one just like everybody else wants to be number one. We've talked to retailers around the country and we can sort of get a pretty good estimate of what it's going to do in its first full week. It's one of the top debuts of the entire year. We're expecting sales of 550 to 600,000 and that will certainly put it on top at number one on the Billboard 200 for next week. Look at his face. I'm at ease and uh, it's out and I'm proud. Uh, I mean, I'm very proud that I was able to do this. What's up? It's amazing. I feel like I've learned a lot this whole summer just about music, about myself, about life. But I can honestly say that this moment right here, you know, knowing that the record's out and seeing people come up to you that have bought it and, and tell you how much they enjoy it makes all of that worth it, you know. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, for that reason alone. and. That's enough. That's enough to, to want to do it again. <laughs>